Leo Garcia from Sydney. University, University of Western Sydney. What's your job there these days in Belfield? I teach in translation technologies. I teach in translation English and Spanish. Mm -hmm. I coordinate the program, the interpreting and translation program there. Mm -hmm. And yes, that's what I do. That you're known to us as, as a man who knows a lot about translation technologies. You, you specialized in that field. Yeah, I've been teaching years. on that since 2004. Teaching, but also you publish, you, you, you do yeah, reviews I, I, I of new, yes, yes. new software that comes some out. some research, yeah. I, I've written a lot on that, yeah. Okay. A lot. Yeah. Not uh, as much as you. <laughs> Not so. <laughs> Not so. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Ignacio. How did you get? You're from Spain. I'm right? from Spain. You yeah. got to Australia. Yes. Um, so let's go back. Twenty three, twenty four. Mm -hmm. What were you doing around that age? I was a primary school teacher. I was Where? A, uh, I started my teaching career at seventeen. Wow. In Burgos, wow. and then I was in Madrid, and by the time I was 23, 24, I was in Sabadell, uh, That's Next to Barcelona, of you. Yeah, yeah, next yeah. to Barcelona. I was learning Catalan, I started teaching in Catalan there. For the family have... in Catalan. Uh, I have forgotten <laughs> most of my okay. Catalan since. Right. Mm. And how, I, did, I, how did you get to Australia? What, what happened? Uh, uh, there... As a teacher, as a primary school teacher, there are some positions appear in for teaching the children of Spanish migrants in Australia, yeah. and I applied for them, and I got one. Did you know English? And I went there. No, I didn't know any English. <laughs> by, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm lying. I, I did a six months uh, international house course okay. in the evenings. Yeah, I, I, I knew the very, very basics. And so with um, that you arrived in, in Sydney? I, I, I arrived in, actually in Surfers Paradise, which is a beautiful area south of Brisbane. Yeah. And I've spent my first year there teaching the kids of Spanish migrants. Okay. And I did that for some six years. And I had a great time and I loved it. Did you like to I, surf? And I, no, 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 I, I was too old for that. Oh, okay. And I went back to Spain and I went back to my, the school. And somehow I decided to go back to Australia and to try. Then you got into history. Well, I, while I was a primary school teacher, I did my uh, licenciatura in geography and history. Your first degree, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, my first degree was uh, the teaching degree okay. we yeah. did at the Escuela Normal. Okay. They were uh, they were called like that then. Um, so I did uh, uh, my licenciatura in, in geography and history. And then uh, when I went to Australia, I did my master in history. I mean, I understood that history was my So you idea. went back to Australia to, to where? To Sydney now? Or? Yeah, no, no, no. Like, while I was teaching kids in Sydney yeah. on the evenings, yeah. I was doing my Master of okay. uh, Arts in History at the University of Sydney. Okay. And, um, and then I ended up doing my PhD also in history, because it's what I thought I was into. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, I was doing translation. I was particularly from the, like, the, 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 there is some time between, I mean, I finished my teaching contract with the Spanish embassy, mm -hmm. and I'm not yet at the University of Western Sydney where I work now. So there was some, that period in which I would do my PhD in history, in which I would go through a lot of more or less precarious, is such a word? It is indeed. Uh, jobs. And well, my teaching 
this is where I did my translating. Okay. Most of my translation experience has been done over this period. But in the meantime, you became the expert in Spanish immigration. To exactly. Yep. Yeah. Uh, like yeah. I did, my MA was on Spanish immigration mm -hmm. into Australia, particularly that period, um, 58, 64, which is where a most lot, of lot Spaniards of people, yeah. uh, came, assisted migrants. And uh, yeah, I bought a book I'm quite proud of, which is Operación Canguro, uh, uh, the Spanish migration, assisted migration scheme from those years. And uh, yeah. So what was the attraction of translation? I mean, that you, you was a part-time, yeah, a lot of, I mean, I was doing translation as a way of paying for my P doctoral yeah. degree. I was doing other things somehow linked to language, even to translation. I was working on SBS. Uh, SBS is a, a national television service national yes. for migrant communities for migrant originally, communities. but then it became so, I was stuff. working there in the Spanish program yeah. and translating a lot of stuff from English into Spanish. Mm. I was doing casual teaching at universities, teaching Spanish. And, uh, so, so yeah. why? Okay, you would you came to translation because you were doing it already. Yeah. So from, from yeah. practice. I've never. Yeah. From practice, I, you I, came I've into never did consciously thought of becoming a professional full time translator. That that was or a translation teacher. Or translation teacher. That is what you are. That was something I was doing on the side okay. to pay for what I thought was my. So somehow you got sucked into this translation. Exactly. I, I got. Do you regret that? Uh, no, no. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't. Uh, uh, does this song goes? I, I don't regret anything. Uh, that I got at that time a position at the University of New South Wales, and I found that in the place I have fallen. Uh, what they were interested in was in languages and interpreting and translation. Okay. And all my expertise in history, I couldn't use it. And um, a flexible kind of person as I am, I said, okay, I've done translation. I love translation. I like, well, it was fine. Let's move into that area. So how and, did you get... and there was a need for me to move into that area, and I did yes, happily. Yeah. How did you get into translation technology then? As a, as that a was, yeah, but I, I volunteered for it. I mean, someone had to do it, and no one was ready to do it, and I volunteered for it. I, I had, I mean, before uh, entering to the university, I had this period of doing a lot of different kind of precarious jobs, and one of them was working for El Español in, in Australia, the a newspaper for the mm -hmm. Spanish community there. And in the course of this work, I, 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 I got, um, familiarized myself with IT technologies. I was a master. I okay, mean, so you I, were using... I was warfare. using word processors. I was using computers. I was. I mean, well, what years are we talking about? Uh, we are talking uh, ninety-two to ninety-four. Okay. Uh, the, the, I mean, the web okay, so wasn't the still there. Pre-translation memory, but uh, pre-translation yeah. memory. Yes, definitely. So we got the but, internet yeah, coming. Yes, in but I, I've, I've, I've noticed that on getting my job at the university, just knowing so much as I knew about computers was a comparative advantage okay. and when they uh, and when i heard about translation memories and when we were talking about providing some kind of instruction on this idea i was very happy to raise my hand and okay good volunteer okay and the rest is history
Well, well, the history keeps changing very quickly. That's the interesting thing about the technologies. Mm -hmm. So the question is, what kind of research would help us now in the area of translation technology? And then part of it is, where do you think this is heading? But let's, let's focus on the research thing. What, what kind of knowledge do we need that we're not getting? Uh, as I see it now, I mean, conventional translation, in conventional translation, I, I tend to look at uh, this area from the point of view of the translator, the professional translator, mm -hmm. because I'm teaching in that area. And uh, in conventional translation, What the translation provides to the client is just one output, which is the target text. In web translation, when translators work on the web, uh, the, uh, the translators provide the client with the target text, they provide the client with the memories, the, the mm -hmm. database of translations, they provide the clients also with all this metadata, uh, particularly when working online, mm -hmm. uh, which, uh, I mean, which tool are, tools are being used, we, uh, where does the matches come mm -hmm. from, uh, how long translators take on translating mm -hmm. a particular text. And um, I think uh, a lot of research is needed on these two other outputs, or oh, I would like or oh, that's what interests me at this time uh, on research on those sub byproducts of translation, not the target text, but the metadata and this all these language data, these memories. Is that an ethical problem? Just the fact that lots of data is being accumulated about the translator's work. Lots of that is used for yeah. further mm -hmm. translations, I and we're not getting paid for that. Yeah, is well, it, it's true that the, uh, we are, uh, translators are not getting paid for that. Uh, it may be uh, there may be ethical issues there. Uh, I, I, I'm not personally interested in the ethical issues, mm -hmm. uh, but um, I mean translation is changing. It's changing a lot, and there is. Um, yeah. And, and for instance, uh, the metadata, I, I would assume that it about five times, uh, five times, five years, um, which texts are suitable for which, for post editing or for full human translation, or which translator is best suited for post editing or for full human translation will be decided by metadata by looking at this big data uh, all online platforms are collecting and are in the hands of the clients whoever controls these platforms um, that's one Does that idea. apply to crowdsourcing as well? Yeah. To outsourcing to non-professionals, yeah. paraprofessionals. Yeah. Is that is that the way forward? Do you think for the industry? Uh, I don't know, but I believe that that's going to happen, and there are uh, or there, there are already a lot of uh, small businesses trying oh. to get things into that way. So a lot of us think we're training a professional translator who's going to get paid for all their work and get well paid and have a nice life. Is that being threatened by these technologies or being okay. helped? Hof um, hopefully, uh, there will be conventional translation mm -hmm. as we have known it from the beginning of history. Conventional translation. There will be web translation. And a lot of content will be translated via the web, will be translated. So these are online translation yes. memories with machine translation? With machine things, translation, yeah. yes. Okay. And hopefully some translators will work still um, 
as they've always done. Mm -hmm. And there will be many areas on which the technologies wouldn't be able to get in. Uh, I suppose it's happening in all professions. I mean, mm -hmm. just uh, yep. in medicine, in law, in photography. Yes. Uh, so there will be professional the photographers. Yep. There will be lawyers. And there will be then uh, areas in which with the help of non-professionals or with the help of machines, a lot of things will be done. Can we envisage future societies where everyone can translate with the help of online tools with minimal knowledge of foreign languages? Yes. Is this a better society we're going towards? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, okay. Um, well, somehow uh, globalization. We we are we are converging uh, as a society. I mean, we are all going to end up e speaking English. Uh, we are all going to knowing English, perhaps. knowing English, I don't know knowing if English. Speaking. Uh, and, and, and our other languages and, and we are going all to be familiar with a universal culture while pertaining also to our own mm -hmm. smaller cultures and um, yes I would uh, like uh, they've already been doing experiments on which monolinguals with uh, subject matter expertise can perform almost as well or better as translators as long as the matching translation doesn't make errors of content. Mm -hmm. um, Good, so we can in the future train people in translation and not languages. I, uh, those are too difficult questions for me to answer. I, 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 I would imagine that there will be room for both. Okay. Uh, for languages, which take longer to master, and for getting to know whatever you need to know from another language for a particular purpose, which uh, can be done with the help of the technology. Okay. Ignacio, thanks very much.